Morsel, and thank you for tuning in to Fright Night Radio. We love to bring you stories of fright every Friday night. Stories that are creepy, suspenseful, <laughs> and most of all, frightful. <laughs> Welcome to Area 52, another imaginative short story penned by Seth Chambers and produced by narrator David A. Nickerson. It was a sweltering summer night. And the aliens done messed with the wrong dog. Rex and I were in the back 40, heading for the chicken coop, where the hens were squawking and throwing up a big fuss when a blinding light shone down on us like we were smack in the middle of a stage. A second later, my poor hound dog started rising up into the air. I didn't hesitate for one second before charging over to help. Not that it did much good. I meant to pull him back down to earth, but instead ended up flying along with him right into this giant spaceship hovering overhead. I wanted to shout to my faithful companion that everything was going to be okay, only I wasn't able to utter a sound or move or even blink my eyes. The light inside the ship was a weird green, and just as my eyes adjusted to it, a bunch of short gray aliens surrounded me. I was just floating in mid-air, not able to move or talk or anything. I kind of expected to see lots of buttons and instrument panels like on Star Trek, but there looked to be none of that, and for some reason I got the feeling the aliens controlled everything with their big heads. I'd heard stories about these little bug-eyed creatures before, because who hasn't? Always before, I had laughed all that off. But now, I strained my brain to remember those tales, so maybe I could figure out what was coming next. Well, the first thing that popped into my head was medical experiments, and the second thing was organ harvesting. Well, damn! I might not be the smartest guy to ever walk God's green earth, but even I could have thought of about a thousand things way less scary than screwing around with my body and selling the leftovers. Now, I know that most everything you hear is just made-up stuff, so I told myself that maybe those UFO horror stories were all a bunch of bull, and these aliens probably just wanted to talk a bit, maybe ask a few questions, interview an average earthling, something like that. I was just starting to believe this when my body moved again, this time toward a metal slab that looked remarkably like an operating table. Rex was floating as well, right toward another table. I tried to put up a fight, but my body just wasn't cooperating. I screamed a bit and was surprised to be able to do that much. I heard Rex whimpering and that just about broke my heart. My dog is my buddy. I saved him from the pound when he was just a pup, and he returned the favor later by chomping a diamondback rattlesnake just as it was about to sink its fangs into yours truly. We're a team, Rex and me, through thick and thin. Stop struggling said a voice, only it wasn't spoken aloud, but in my head. Right as my body settled onto the operating table, I looked into the eyes of one of the little big heads and knew he was talking to me telepathically, like mind to mind. And so I talked right back to him with my own thoughts, and I told him, Look here, you don't want nothing I got. The army didn't take me because my legs is bowed and my feet is flat. As for my innards, they're all messed up and abused. Why, my liver is soaked in Tennessee sipping whiskey, and my intestines are twisted up like one of those balloon animals you get at the counter fair. While I was telling him this, life came back into my body. 
I was mad and scared, and I started to put up a fight. I heard another word from one of the aliens. Restraints. Then invisible hands pinned me tight to that hog table, so all I could do was lie there and think, which isn't particularly easy for me. I believe in what my mama calls karma, which means what goes around comes around. So I desperately tried to figure out whatever I did to deserve being treated like this. I came up empty. Now don't get me wrong, I stirred up plenty of trouble in my younger days, drinking and joyriding and so on, but I long since paid my dues for that. Since I was never what you call the brightest bulb in the knife drawer, I always got caught and confessed my crimes, because I was bad at thinking up stories and alibis and such, then try to remember them later on. While I lay there thinking about all this, two more little freaks glided over and, scary as that was, I was glad they was at least leaving Rex alone for now. My big loyal hound was on the other table, but the aliens had their attention fixed on me. Good, I thought, cause my hound damn sure didn't deserve any of this crap. A metal table floated over next to me and sitting on top were gadgets you might see in some old Frankenstein movie. I took one peek at them and fought with all my strength against those invisible hands. Didn't do much good, but damn if I knew what else to do. Then one of them things peered at me and his brain said, Just relax. Right as he picked up what looked like a cross between a Black & Decker drill and a skill saw. Then I overheard him thinking, Why is this subject able to move? I don't know. Another alien thought back at him, and at that, I almost smiled. It seemed something wasn't going according to plan, and I wondered if maybe this could work in my favor. Then one of them thought, The anesthetic device seems to be non-functional. As far as I could tell, they didn't have a leader, so I gave them each my most sad-eyed, poor me look and thought at them, Please don't do this. My organs aren't worth much, so how about you just please, please, please send me and my dog back home? They seemed to mull it over, and I got to feeling real hopeful, at least until one of them thought, Anesthesia is hardly necessary. Let us proceed. With that, they all hunched in close, while the one with the drill thing thought at the others, Where shall we begin? Maybe the feet suggested one. Damn it, I told you I was flat-footed. The drill saw flared to life, making a horrible high-pitched whine. The alien moved it down toward the end of the operating table, and I was so scared that I forgot all about trying to say things telepathically and just screamed, leave my feet alone. One of them thought, don't we have enough feet already? Well, I felt a moment of relief as the drill saw thing moved away. I love my feet and need them for hiking and hunting. Also for dancing, I thought, since my wife was always trying to get me to boot scoot with her. Now, I made a silent vow that if I got out of this alive with all my body parts, I'd take her out for a night on the town she'd never forget. We have plenty of feet. Oh, good, yeah. Thank you. We could probably use an extra brain, though. I wanted to scream again, but somehow managed to hold myself together and just thought at him, You don't want my brain. I'm not all that smart. At this, all the greys sort of thought, Hmm. That's right, I went on. I barely made it through high school. Really? Is that so? Yes. In fact, when I was a kid, my old man would say, Hey, Billy, I challenge you to a game of 52 pickup. And I'd say, Sure, Dad. And then he'd throw an entire deck of cards across the room and say, There you go. Pick them up, Billy. I fell for it every single time. That's how dumb I was. Interesting. You do sound most unintelligent. Well, I am. I am. Well, everybody always said that I had more balls than brains. Hmm. How are we doing on genitals? Uh, we need to restock. My mama always said that karma is a bitch. Now that may be true, but this time it was a blessing. After I adopted Rex, everybody told me that I needed to get my dog neutered. 
my old man called me up one day and said, Billy, you can't be having that hound dog running around knocking up every sweet little bitch he can lay his paws on. Gotta get him fixed, son. Yeah, fixed as if he were broken. Truth be told, I actually made an appointment to bring him to the vet for that very purpose. But when the day came, I just couldn't do it. I kept thinking of my buddy lying on a cold operating table, unable to move, while the man in a surgical mask snipped away at his most delicate parts. I canceled the appointment. Rex kept his balls, and I made myself some good karma. Now aboard this alien spaceship with bug-eyed freakazoids debating what organ to liberate from my body first, I was ready to cash in on all the good karma I might have. I started to imagine myself cashing in karma chips at a casino when I caught sight of Rex getting to his feet over on the other table. He whimpered, but softly so that none of the aliens noticed. He had his tail tucked tight between his legs, but only until he looked over and spotted me. Now, I know he must have still been scared as anything, and I'm sure he couldn't have the first idea what these gray creatures were or what in blazes was going on. But a certain look came over him, and his tail rose from between his legs, and he jumped down from that table while the alien's attention was still on me. Now, bloodhounds are not exactly mean dogs, and Rex is the downright sweetest pooch you'll ever likely to come across. But if you push him too much, he'll push back. Rex snarled at those gray aliens in a way that I've only heard from him twice in all the years we've been together. The first time he snarled like that was when the cousin of a friend's friend sneaked into my house in the middle of the night after somebody told him I was loaded. What woke me that night wasn't Rex, but the wailing voice of my intruder. I came downstairs, 30 odd six in hand, to find the man curled into a tight little ball, sort of like a pill bug while Rex stood God. The second time Rex snarled like that was inside Logan's hardware. I'd gone in to pick up some door hinges, and while I was shooting the breeze with Logan, some big kid started bullying a littler one, shoving him around and calling him names. But Rex stepped in between them and let that bully know he wasn't putting up with that stuff. The big kid ran off, and I had to hold Rex back from going after him. I know he really wanted to give chase, but It wouldn't do to have my dog bite some kid, even if he did deserve it. Besides, I think he learned his lesson. Now, Rex was snarling at them aliens, so their attention turned from me to him. One of them picked up what looked like a plastic tube and pointed it at my dog. When nothing happened, he shook the thing a couple of times and looked at it kind of weird. Another of the aliens thought at him, What's wrong with the disruptor? At that moment, the phrase equipment malfunction zipped through my mind. And let me tell you, those words were a damn sight cheerier than medical experiments in organ harvesting. The alien dropped his tube and reached for Rex. Big mistake. My dog's teeth sunk into that boy's tiny, delicate looking hand faster than my eyes could see. And the next moment, the little guy was dancing around in pain, shaking his hand. What's more, All them other gray boys were doing the exact same thing, so I guess their brains were all linked up together real good. A second later, the invisible hands disappeared, and I popped off that operating table like bacon fat off a griddle. Once on my feet, I towered over those little aliens. Now, usually, I don't pick on guys littler than me, but this wasn't a usual type situation. They were set to hurt Rex, and that means all bets are off. When one of them thought at me, get back on the table, I slapped him upside his big head with everything I had. He went down hard, and all the rest fell down the same way. Then Rex tore into another, and what shot from all their minds at the same time was, ow! A second later, everyone and everything set to floating around like happy birthday balloons. I guess they really did operate all the equipment with the brains, and now that their heads were busy dealing with a riled-up bloodhound, they'd lost control of things. Oddly enough, Rex didn't look the least bit distressed at this point. Even though we were aboard an alien spaceship, floating around in zero gravity, and surrounded by horrible organ harvesting gray aliens, my bloodhound seemed to have overcome his fear and even looked to be having a good time. 
His tail took to wagging up a storm, which propelled him along like a motorboat. And every time he came within range of an alien, he tore into whatever body part he could sink his teeth into, so that now the creatures were thinking things like, Ouch! And help! And something that was the alien equivalent of, Oh, shit! My heart absolutely swelled with pride for my pooch. Then I guess they really lost control because the whole spaceship tilted. And then the same light beam that had kidnapped me and Rex returned and swirled about like a Pink Floyd laser show. The beam latched onto one of them operating tables and whisked it right through the floor and out of sight. Next to go was one of the aliens. I think it was the one that had pointed the tube at Rex. Next, the light beam took hold of Rex, and just as I called out his name, it nabbed me as well. Rex and I both went through the floor of the rocking ship and then down, down, down to the ground. We landed just a short way from the chicken coop. The hands were going absolutely crazy, and who could blame them? The spaceship was lit up like a disco ball and swirling about like it was drunk. What's more, it spat out gray aliens and operating tables and medical equipment like the damn thing was playing 52 pickup. My heart thundered, and I was happy as anything to have my feet planted back on solid ground. But my biggest concern right then was Rex. My poor bloodhound didn't deserve any of this. I was about to go over and comfort my dog and tell him that everything was okay now, but he ran off before I could get close. In my mind, I heard, Please, no, leave me alone. It was coming from one of the greys as Rex charged after him. I thought of calling my hound off, but decided against it. After all, he seemed to be having fun. So I just laughed and said, Go get him, boy. Like I said, the aliens done messed with the wrong dog. Thank you for tuning in to tonight's episode of Fright Night Radio. If you enjoyed our story, please give us a thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe to our channel so you enjoy a frightful new tale every Friday night. Pleasant dreams.